My name is Andrei Bach, and I'll be presenting our work on leaking data over the network with file system deduplication side channels. This work was done in collaboration with my colleagues from FU Amsterdam and ETH Zurich. File system deduplication is an important feature designed to save space. Researchers have demonstrated how to abuse memory deduplication side channels in the past. File system deduplication was considered safe because it works at larger granularity and file systems have mostly asynchronous behavior. In this presentation, I will show how an attacker can exploit file system deduplication to leak sensitive data from a remote system at byte granularity, even though the file system operates asynchronously and the deduplication works at large granularity. Specifically, I will show how an attacker can leak long-lived OAuth access tokens from a log file on a remote Nginx web server during off hours. The Nginx server uses the ZFS file system with inline deduplication. The attacker uses techniques such as alignment probing and secret spraying to leak the data at a rate of one byte every 40 minutes in a LAN scenario and one byte every hour in a one scenario. Let's look at how the timing side channel is created in ZFS. When an application writes data, it is placed in an intermediary cache. The data from this intermediary cache is flushed to the disk every five seconds as part of a transaction. The transaction includes the duplication checks which decide if the data should be written to storage or not. If we observe the behavior in the time domain, for every transaction, there is a peak corresponding to the duration of the write operations inside the transaction. If the data that is flushed in the transaction is duplicate, then the width of the peak is shorter compared to the case when the data in the transaction is unique. An attacker uses this observation and creates write patterns and measures their effect in the time domain to leak information about the data contained in the transactions. In our threat model, uh, we make the following assumptions. The attacker and victim have access to the same file system, directly or indirectly. The file system performs inline deduplication and uses the default configuration. We also assume that there is no limit on the number of IO operations that can be performed by the attacker. We consider two attack scenarios, a remote scenario across the network where the attacker and victim are located on different systems. They interact with the same file system through a program that is not under attacker control, such as a server program that logs the requests. Um, the second scenario is a local scenario where the attacker and victim are co-located on the same machine and the attacker interacts with the file system using unprivileged programs that perform low-level system calls like write and sync. Um, I will only cover the remote scenario in this presentation. For the local scenario, please uh, see the paper. To build the attack, the attacker has to handle a few challenges. Uh, first, the file system operates mostly asynchronous using uh, intermediary caches and transactional behavior, as we explained earlier. To address this challenge, the attacker has to make use uh, either of synchronous I.O. if available, or massage the cache content and observe the transactional behavior duration. Another challenge uh, is the granularity of the deduplication checks. The typical deduplication record size is 128 kilobyte. This means that the attacker needs to work with blocks of data of this size to generate the duplication effects in the time domain. To be able to work with data at lower granularity, the attacker uses a technique called alignment probing, which we will uh, show. Another challenge is the signal strength. The attacker wants to amplify the deduplication effect to be able to detect it remotely. To address this challenge, the attacker uses secret spraying, as we will describe next. We now look at each exploitation technique. 
to perform cache massaging, the attacker interleaves attacker data and victim data, creating the following pattern of three blocks of 128 kilobyte, which are written to the FAST system. Um, the first block is partially filled by the attacker written data. Uh, then the victim writes their, their data, filling the deduplication block and spilling the last byte into the next block. The attacker then writes the rest of the block and writes a third block, measuring the write duration of this write. If the content of the second and third blocks uh, is the same, then a deduplication will happen during the transaction, which will determine a shorter transaction time. This way, the attacker leaks one byte from the victim's secret data. We call this series of write operations that the attacker makes a timed write primitive, and the attacker uses it repeatedly to observe the effect of the duplication on his write operations. Um, the next technique is alignment probing, uh, which is used by the attacker to probe each byte of the victim data independently. To do this, uh, the attacker writes data in a block, filling it partially. Then the victim writes the rest of the block, spilling the last byte into the next block. Uh, the attacker fills the block and then uses the next block to test for the byte value, as we've seen in the previous slide. The attacker then varies the alignment in the first block and repeats the sequence to discover the next byte, and so on until the whole uh, secret data of the victim is known. This enables the attacker to work at byte granularity and reduce the entropy of the secret. Uh, the third technique that the attacker uses is secret spraying. This technique is intended to amplify the timing signal for the attacker, especially in remote scenarios. The way it works is by generating multiple patterns of the three blocks and spray candidate secret values across multiple deduplication records. Uh, the goal is to create multiple deduplication events in the same transaction. Uh, to avoid deduplicating on his own data, the attacker has to use unique alignment data and unique probe data. This is important to avoid noise. We now describe our remote data leak scenario, which contains four actors, victim browser, a single sign-on server, an SSO client, and an attacker controlled website. The attacker targets access tokens from the O2 implicit grant access scheme and assumes that the token does not expire for the duration of the attack. The SSO client runs Nginx and logs the requests of the victim and the attacker. The requests include the access token in the URL, so they are written to the log file, uh, which is located on ZFS with the duplication enabled. We also assume that the SSO client does not offer the XFO headers. Uh, the workflow of the attack is the following. Uh, the victim obtains an access token by authenticating with the SSO server. Then the victim browser is lured to an attacker controlled website. And this website serves the attacker controlled JavaScript and a hidden iframe. Uh, the iframe issues a request to the SSO client uh, with an incorrect access token. Uh, the SSO client logs this request in the access log, uh, filling a deduplication block partially and helping the attacker with alignment. Uh, next, the SSO client redirects the victim to the SSO server because the token was wrong. Uh, the SSO server acknowledges that the victim is already authenticated and redirects the iframe to the SSO client. Uh, this redirect causes the victim to issue a GET request with the correct access token, which reaches the 
uh, SSO client. So this request is also logged by the SSO client and fills the deduplication block, spilling into the next deduplication block by one byte. Um, next, the attacker independently issues a GET request so to the SSO client to probe for the secret byte value of the access token and times this probe request. Uh, next, the malicious JavaScript from the victim browser reloads the iframe and the sequence repeats until the attacker obtains uh, all the secret access token. For every byte in the secret, the attacker runs a number of probes per byte using the pattern described um, and the techniques I mentioned earlier. Uh, when the cache is flushed to the disk, a peak can be observed in the timing measurements of the probes. Uh, the attacker observes these peaks in real time and chooses as the correct byte value the one that produces a peak with a duration below a specific threshold. For our tests, we use a threshold of half a second. Um, we evaluated the remote data leak using uh, for the SSO client a system with a four core CPU, 16 GB of RAM, FreeBSD as the operating system, uh, ZFS in the default configuration, meaning 128 kilobyte dedupe block and 10% of RAM uh, as the dirty data memory, the cache, um, and Nginx one, uh, version 1.14. Uh, we run an experiment on a quiescent server and use two locations for the attacker, one in a LAN, one hop uh, away from the SSO client, and the other one uh, in a one 12 hops away. Uh, the attacker probed for all tokens of 22 bytes encoded uh, with the base64 alphabet. Uh, in the tables, you can see the success rate to recover one byte over uh, LAN or one. Um, to evaluate the success rate, uh, we varied the probes per byte from 200 to 800. Uh, and in a LAN setting, for example, if an attacker uses um, 400 probes per byte, um, it takes uh, 42 minutes to uh, leak the byte with a success rate of 92%. And uh, this attack performs uh, approximately 10, 10 gigabyte of IO. Um, for the one case in the same setting of 400 props per byte value, the success rate was 94% and the attack took one hour to leak one byte. Um, and for the whole uh, token, it takes 21 hours. I will now briefly discuss mitigations. Ideally, uh, the duplication would save space and have constant time behavior. In practice, this may not be possible without a fast system redesign. We proposed in the paper a pseudo same behavior policy, which overrides duplicate data on disk. This way, space is still saved uh, and the deduplicated write path is slowed down, eliminating the signal for remote attacks. Uh, for more details about the mitigation, please see the paper. To conclude, we show that fast system deduplication implementations introduce timing side channels that can be abused to leak, fingerprint, or exfiltrate data. We show that a remote attack can be used to leak data at byte granularity across the network. And we investigated mitigations and showed that a pseudo same behavior policy in the time domain is practical without file system redesign. 